I need you guys to pray for me. I believe I've taken the mark of the beast. I didn't know, okay? I'm going to hell now. I can't be saved. But I didn't know. I didn't know. Please, I need you guys to pray for me. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. What's the point of living? What's the point of living, right? That's what it was. I didn't know. <laughs> pray for me. Pray for me, please. Oh gosh, just pray for me. What's the point of living? <laughs>
but with a different focus. In Revelation 13, uh, it's talking about the tribulation timeline with a focus on the Antichrist and the false prophets and what he will do with the saints. And in Revelation 11, the tribulation timeline is um, still spoken of, but this time with a focus on the two witnesses and what they will do. And so as you read through Revelation 11, it shows something that must happen before there is any mark of the beast, before the Antichrist really even starts to uh, be empowered. First, power is given to the two witnesses. As it reads, and I will give power, I will give power to my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for 1260 days, which of course is three and a half years, clothed in sackcloth. Now, some people see the two witnesses as two Old Testament prophets. Some see them as an end time anointed remnant. And so really, no matter your view on that, what will clearly happen is Holy Spirit power will be on the scene, doing amazing things, and the entire world will see it. Revelation 11, 5, if anyone would harm them, fire pours from their mouths and consumes their foes. 11.6, they have the power to shut the sky so that no rain may fall during the days of their prophesying. And they have the power over the waters to turn them into blood and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they desire. And then here's the key, Revelation 11.7, and when they have finished their testimony, the beast that rises from the bottomless pit will make war on them and then conquer them and kill them. So here is what here is what we have to get. The two witnesses are going to prophesy for how long? Three and a half years. And it says that when they have finished the testimony, this powerful testimony for three and a half years, then after they have done this. Then the beast that rises from the bottomless pit, he will make war on them and conquer them and kill them. And so again, scholars note that Revelation 11, 7 is in parallel to Revelation 13, 7, as far as the tribulation timeline period goes. And you can see that from the language again. In Revelation 11, 7, the Antichrist will make war on the witnesses and conquer them. And then here in Revelation 13, 7, it says that the Antichrist will what? Make war on the saints and conquer them. So we see this parallel uh, of the time frame. And so that means, get this, that prior to the Antichrist rising to make war on the saints prior to the false prophet enforcing the mark of the beast, what must first take place? The empowerment of the two witnesses and their powerful testimony for three and a half years. And so this is why, this is why I lean with those who would argue that since we don't yet see that, it's unlikely that the Antichrist is currently here enforcing the mark. Why? Because first, again, the two witnesses will be empowered and the world will see these miraculous things and it will just be something that is un unlike anything we have seen in our lifetime, really in the past 2,000 years. Now, for more on the two witnesses, be sure to check out our two witnesses movie part two. I know many of you have seen the first one. That one was a great film, but really the second one is really what digs deep to explore the olive trees and the lampstands. But the main thing in that documentary is that it explores what the power that they will have, what might it look like? How might that manifest? So it's a very important documentary. Check that out. Now, the next question is, can you take the mark of the beast by accident when it is enforced? I mean, won't it be by deception that people take it? So let's explore what the Bible says that deception 
will be. In the book of 2 Thessalonians, we are shown how many will be deceived into worshiping the Antichrist or man of lawlessness. As it reads, the coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works, and he will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the lie. And so you can see here that there's going to be this miraculous satanic power going on and everyone's going to be seeing these marvelous signs. And you can see how this is really in parallel to what Revelation was describing when it says that the false prophet will be on the scene doing these miraculous feats, making fire fall down from the sky. And so it's going to be a really astonishing time. It's going to deceive those who are perishing and they perish because they refused to love the truth. And because they refuse to love the truth, it says, for this reason, God sends them a powerful delusion so that they will believe the lie. And so we see that God is going to allow this deception of satanic miracles to happen really as punishment for those who what refuse to love the truth and so be saved. Now, here's the thing right now, there are still many who don't know the gospel. But as we saw in Revelation 11, what happens right before the Antichrist shows up? The two witnesses display this powerful Holy Spirit power. And then they share the gospel with the entire world. And so when that happens, when that happens, people will be without excuse. because they will not only know the gospel, but they will have seen the power of the gospel. And whenever you experience the power of God and still turn from it, oh man, judgment, judgment comes swiftly and fiercely. And so as we know, um, people will see this power of God and they still won't repent. They still will not want to be on God's side likely because the two witnesses will call out sin and you know no matter how much evidence you give them for god people don't want to turn from sin that's usually the thing that makes them not want to choose god so after people turn from the truth of the two witnesses when they testify what happens well basically it says that god in his anger will send this delusion because people refuse to love the truth. And so that here it is, all will be condemned who have not believed the truth, but have delighted in wickedness. And so you see, God is not in the business of sending things to condemn those who love him, to trick those who love him. The Antichrist comes to condemn and deceive those who refused to listen to the testimony of the two witnesses. You see, as it says in Revelation 11, when they have finished their testimony, then the Antichrist that rises from the bottomless pit, he will attack them and have the false prophet on the scene and forcing the mark, performing satanic miracles and the rest you already know. So basically, it's really interesting. You know, the world says they want to see evidence. They say, we'll believe in God. Just show us proof, show us evidence. And so God basically says, okay, so the two witnesses are empowered and then they preach the gospel with a miraculous power. And people still will refuse to believe it, right? And so then the Antichrist shows up. And guess what? He has power too. And so now people are going to have to choose, like which power do we want to accept? Do we want to accept the power of God or do we want to accept the power of Satan? Here's the thing, the power of God's going to come with a, a call for repentance. The power of Satan is likely going to come with a call for, you can do as you will. Believe in me and you can live however you want. You can uh, do whatever lifestyle you want, right? And so what are people gonna go with? Hmm, they're gonna choose the dark side. So you see how this is going to play out. It's going to be a, a battle of powers here. It's going to be really interesting. And so that is the biblical sequence. And so really, as much as we want 
For Jesus to return and for the end to be here, we have to remember that there is a timeline to these things and we can't we can't rush it. And so when someone asks, is the mark of the beast being enforced? Is the Antichrist already in power? Well, my question back to them is, have the two witnesses been empowered yet? Because that comes first. And really, it's exciting. Listen, imagine three and a half years of bold Acts chapter two power. You see, many times when we think about the end times, talk about the end times, people get scared, they get nervous, they get fearful because they only have these images of the Antichrist. They only have these images of persecution and the mark of the beast and all these things. But we cannot forget the rising of the two witnesses. That's very exciting. Acts chapter two, bold power as the prophets foretold, where the spirit will pour out and your sons and daughters will prophesy and there'll be signs in the heavens and wonders in the earth shaking. These things are actually going to happen. It's going to take place and blessed are those who listen and hear the testimony of the two witnesses. Because in that day, the power of God will be on full display. And may we be among those who choose the call for repentance, not do as you will. God bless.